Well, here we go then, folks. Club two of this year's non-lethal legend starts right here. If you are new to the series, this is a pretty good jumping on point. We're starting at a brand new club today, but if you want to catch the story so far, the playlist is linked below. We've just done three and a half seasons at Peterborough Sports, starting in the National League North and making it all the way up to the bottom half of the National League. And I got a job in the championship, albeit at a Preston team very much entrenched in a relegation battle halfway through this championship season. It is going to be a tough one. But, you know, that's uh, that's kind of my speciality. Roll the new intro. Hello and welcome to Club 2, Part 1 of Nodley to Legend. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode, we are going to... Have a look around our brand new club, Preston, off of the championship. As you can see, we have breaking news from a uh, oh from Football 365. There you go. Breaking news from the good people at Football 365. My shirt's already on the wall of the office. It's not already on the wall of this office. I do still have a Peter for Sports shirt there. I've changed my tie. It's all been ordered. Things happened very quickly. There'll be a Preston shirt behind me before too long. And on that note, actually, I'm going to a Preston match tomorrow. So if you are a Preston fan... Keep an eye out for me at the match tomorrow. I've sat and booked my tickets before recording this video. So my commitment to go to a match for every club I manage on this year's non to legend continues. Um, but this is our breaking news. Preston North End hire Chapman in a move which is sure to spark plenty of heated debate, most notably in the comments section, I imagine. Kevin Chapman has left Peterborough Sports to join Preston. Chapman arrives with a record of 98 wins, 37 draws and 52 defeats in his career. He's also won a league title. Let's not specify which one it is. It's not important. His first game in charge will be against Huddersfield in the EFL Championship on the 13th of December 2025. And Chapman will face pressure to bring immediate success to Deepdale, having stepped up from his previous standing to take sole charge. I don't know what that means. I was not a joint manager here previously and will need to hit the ground running if he's to win over those who believe his appointment is a questionable decision, a.k.a. the comment section. Steve Cooper was considered to be favourite for the job, but it's unclear whether the club favoured Chapman all along. Of course they did. Peter Sports are now looking for a new manager. Chapman has brought Michael Gash to Preston with him from his Peter Sports backroom team, and I have earned a reputation of signing players under the age of 23 which appears to be a great fit for the club's current vision at Deepdale. I prefer to use a 4-4-2 narrow diamond. I do chop and change a lot, though. I lifted the Vanarama National League North for Peter Sports in 2024, and I'll be afforded the chance to enhance my reputation by bringing success to the new club. And then this bit. Preston are currently 23rd in the championship and have drawn three of the last five games. I've won one, lost one, and drawn three in that time. Um, so previous manager was sacked. Um, this is this is my buddy Craig, who's welcoming me to welcoming me to the club, um, a club with a three star reputation. The media thought we we're going to finish nineteenth, and believe it or not, we find ourselves in a relegation battle. My new buddy is Rich. My other new buddy is Mike, and the club was formed in eighteen eighty, and his fierce rivals with Blackpool. How far north am I going to be driving, Blackpool? Goodness me, I'm going to get a nosebleed. I don't. Blackpool is the furthest north I've ever been. Is this? Am I setting a new record for most north Kev has ever gone? Uh, Preston narrowly avoided relegation from the championship last year. We're currently 23rd. It's all very sad, but we do have a nice big ground with excellent training facilities. And there's money, but it's not clear yet whether that's enough money. We'll have a look at the finances in a moment. But before we look at finances, before we look at players, I've just panicked about how far north it is. I think we probably need to do some very important administration before we go any further. Because this is how north it is, according to Google Maps. There we are at Peterborough Sports, where we're managing currently, back in the civilised middle of the country. Um, we're going to have to drive all the way up the A1 to Leeds, and then across past Huddersfield. Uh, what's this? Manchester, probably. Um, around past Bolton, and then all the way up the M61. I didn't even know the M61 was a thing. Um, to Preston. So it's not quite as far north as Blackpool. So I'm not going to be setting my new personal best for most north I've ever been. That might come later in the series. But we are heading to Preston, a drive of 179 miles, three hours, 16 minutes, which I'm sure you'll agree is too far for me to commute on a daily basis. I'm going to have to move house. And based on my new salary, 
I wonder how much I'll be able to borrow on a mortgage. Absolutely loads is the answer. £839,800. Lovely old stuff. I'm not going to specify the website that I've used to ascertain this because they're still not sponsoring me. So we've subtly scrolled down. This is just a non-specific generic mortgage calculator. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're leveling this up. Sponsor me or I never mention you again. £839,000, though. I feel like that probably buys a lot of house in the north. And goodness me, does it. These are all levelling up significantly on the little two-bed flat in Peterborough I've been living in throughout the save so far. I mean, we're not... I mean, that one. That's... I mean, I want a half-price house. This one, look at all the glass that this has got. That's... Oh, it's got a floor plan. Do love a floor plan. Look at... Why do you need two lounges? Is this... Is this a house specifically for a couple who hate each other? Plus, neither of those lounges have doors, which I probably have issue with. Um, upstairs, we've got a walk-in wardrobe that's probably bigger than the office I'm working out of right now. An enormous land... Oh, give me some photographs. That, that, I mean, that looks like an artist's impression rather than a photograph. Clean your lens, for goodness sake. Look at that. That hallway is bigger than the downstairs of the house I live in now. There we have some chairs. A video. A stupid fireplace and more chairs is that a chair is it a table let me know down in the comment section it's not clear tiny little car just to, i mean it's what you don't know is that's a full-size car and it's just emphasizing how big this garage is this is the li they've got a living room in their kitchen as well as two lounges this is a, a three lounge family how many i mean how many people have you got living here there's some more chairs and also subtle flex background chairs they line that shot up absolutely perfectly good angle of all these different chairs that's one of the lounges oh the i mean look at the state of the, the size of that hallway is ridiculous um bed chair good work fancy bath i mean i ain't fitting in that am i unless i go in sideways maybe um no chairs in that bedroom um that's just too big for a bath that's unnecessarily large fancy stairs bed bathroom Doors. Don't know why you need so many doors. More doors. What's with all the doors? Is that another kitchen? Hang on. <laughs> Are we now at work? Have they got a whole separate office area? More chairs outside. More chairs outside. They've got a hot tub. A little hat. Right. Yeah, I'm having this one. Preston is going to be fun. Now I'll meet the team and can apparently invite them all round to stay because I live in a mansion. And here is the best 11 According to um, according to Craig, I guess the chairman. So, frankly, I'll take his his uh, suggestion with a pinch of salt. Interesting that they are playing in the diamond, which suggests it will suit one of my favourite tactics. And it's good to see a name I recognise in here as well. Adam Eda um, is a player who I've used in um, I don't know if in non league to legend before, but I've certainly used him on Twitch, and he's scored for fun in the championship in the past. Obviously, we can't bring that prior knowledge into non league to legend. And it is interesting to see he's got 20 caps for Ireland and has never scored an international goal. So maybe he's not quite the goal machine you would think he would be in this year's game. But Ben, Wood ben Woodburn's in there as well. It was another solid championship player. And um, there are solid championship players throughout this team. I don't really understand how this team is struggling in the relegation zone. What has been going wrong here? So further confirmation, if you didn't see it on yesterday's Final episode of sports. Um, we're looking to build a young team, under 23s, club's youth system. We're not going to be spending a lot of money and we're looking to move on the old men. We've got to sell before we can buy. It feels like there might be financial problems here that they've not yet properly told me about. Um, <laughs> the fans want me to finish in the top half of the table. That ain't going to happen this year, is it? Um, here we have the squad, but I'm more interested in the finances, which actually, you know what, seem fine. We've got £6 million in the bank. The projection's worrying. Um, not much in the way of transfer debt, though, or any debt at all to speak of, really. Um, sponsorships are not too bad for championship level. I don't really understand why the projection is showing so negative. I think it's just not taking into account championship money properly because what you're seeing here is the shape of a team that gradually increases its baseline every year. We're doing very well financially. I don't know why the wage budget is such a mess. I mean, that's probably, it's not something I can fix. Why, how, why is it, why set me a budget so far below what you're actually spending? Craig, where's he gone? 
he's legged it. He's reserving judgment, which is nice. At least he's not at least he's not judging me on that just yet. So we are going to have to move some players on, which is not ideal. But our best players, Ali McCann, who has been here for years and no reason why he should be in a poor team. Freddie Woodman, who's been here for years. No reason why. I mean, this guy is just called Show, which is a fantastic name. He's in. Um, Raphael Holzhauser. He's a bit old. He's the sort we can probably look to move on straight away. Although if we're playing a diamond, I mean, we've definitely got the components of a diamond right here. We've got Jake O'Brien, who is a decent-looking young-ish centre-back. There's my boy Adam I Ida. Ida. How, where are all... He's played over 100 games and scored eight goals. This is not the man I thought we were getting. We need to turn him into a goal machine. That's job number one. Ben Whiteman. This is a very solid-looking squad. I don't understand why this team is struggling. What is... Oh, my word. We're struggling because we can't score goals, apparently. Presumably, the previous manager got sacked here somewhere. So they don't play a diamond currently. I don't know why they've shown me a diamond. So they were playing a 5-2-1-2, which is basically a diamond for cowards where you play the defensive midfielder in the back three. It's just a huge... So, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve games already this season where we haven't scored a goal. What on earth is that? It's very clear where the problem is. We need goals. We can't bring players in, so we're going to have to find goals within this team. Have we got anyone any good in the... No, no, we haven't. We've got to develop players from this. It'll be fine. <sighs> what do the media actually think we're going to do this season? Uh, they do think 19th. Well, this is going to be... This is going to be an interesting one. I think what we'll do, because we've we've done a lot of chats today, we'll play just the one match. Let's go and play Huddersfield and find out just how bad these things are. Actually, before that, this is interesting. Um, this isn't what we discussed at the interview, but this has actually been downgraded to attempt to avoid relegation. So fingers crossed, because the situation is ropey. We're eight points away from Peterborough. Even if we get relegated, we might survive to rebuild and come back up again, which might actually be the best thing for the future of this club to rebuild that wage structure and get rid of some of these older players. It might not be the worst thing in the world to go down and come back up because it gives us a little bit more breathing space to rebuild. It's hard to rebuild when you're constantly in a relegation battle, whereas it's much easier to enter the championship in good form and good morale. It's just whether or not I'll get away with doing it. We'll find out, I guess. But that was semi-reassuring that I'm not immediately going to get fired if we do struggle. I think we're going to struggle. Well, after much off-camera faffing around, talking to the media, sorting out staffing stuff and job adverts, and I mean, I tell you what, the staff situation here, it's a disaster. I can only assume the last guy took all his staff with him because there's so many vacancies and the staff is awful. So we've put loads of job adverts out. At the moment, it's just me and Gashi doing what we can. Uh, but we've come up with this master plan tactic between the two of us. And um, we're going to do a diamond. Vertical Tiki Taka um, was one of the systems that seemed to suit the players best. It had the thumbs up from the assistant manager. I think it was between this, um, the control possession one, and some boring negative thing that I'm never going to do. Um, so we're starting with Vertical Tiki Taka as our starting point. As ever, we'll move from this. We'll tweak and tweak instructions. We'll tweak, tweak player roles as time goes on. I would have liked to have been able to use um, Ali McCann, but he's absolutely shattered. My long-term plan is for him to sit here as a deep playmaker and for us to have a Mazala or a centre mid on attack a little further forward. But for today, we're going to get this guy, uh, Ben Whiteman, to do our playmaking from central midfield. Um, and this is our 11. So Freddie Woodman in goal should be a perfectly adequate championship goalkeeper. So he's going to be in goal. We've then got Robbie Brady at left back, one of the old men we're going to be looking to get rid of. Um, I mean, I know he's been here a little while, but we don't want all these over 30s. And then we've got Ryan Fredericks, another old man at right back. Both of these guys are going to be moving on. But in the meantime, the fact that they're both wingers playing at fullback is perfect for a diamond. I just hope they've still got the, the engines to get up and down for the full 90 minutes. We don't have much in the way of backups to them. 
Uh, centre back, we've got Jake O'Brien, who wants a new contract and we can't currently afford to give him one. That needs to be a priority for us. And Liam Lindsay, um, another one of our older guys who, I mean, we'll keep him around for a bit because he's only 30, but he needs to be aware that I'm aware of his ancient age. We've got Show at the base of the midfield, playing as a defensive midfielder, and then ahead of him, Brad Potts, another old man. This is the problem here. Um, and then Ben Whiteman, another... I mean, okay, 29 is all right. I, I wouldn't mind being 29 again. Mikey O'Neill is one of the few youngsters we've got. He's going to play in behind the strikers today. Um, he's come through our youth system. That's one of our goals to develop players from our youth system. So let's develop a player from our youth system. Then up front, Sean Maguire, not that one, presumably, um, who's been here forever, never really scored any goals. It's kind of the theme with all of our strikers. He's going to partner Ben Woodburn, who's been here a little while and never really scored any goals. And the long-term plan might be for Woodburn to play in behind Maguire and Ida, but Ida's not fully fit today um, because I guess he's been expending too much energy hiding from goal-scoring opportunities in his career so far. We need to find some goals. Fingers crossed. Those goals are forthcoming today. I haven't even checked how good Huddersfield are. It doesn't matter. All that matters is how good we are. And I look through that squad with many years of experience managing at championship level in various saves through various games. And I know this team is good enough for mid-table in the championship comfortably. We just need to go out there and prove it. And the first way to start proving it is to score some football goals. So that is job number one. Huddersfield are not too far above us, to be honest. So this is a big opportunity for us today. Having looked at the map as well, we drove through Huddersfield on the way here. It's a, lo a local-ish derby, local derby. There's so many teams so close together up in the north. I don't know what counts as a local derby. Certainly, down where I'm from, they see these two are closer together than any of our local rivals were back at Peterborough Sports. Uh, but who knows up here in the in the north where there's football teams on every street corner? We've had it. We've had an early chance there and forced a corner. We are working with the same set piece instructions that we use down at Peter Sports. They're the ones that are available to download on the Steam Workshop if you want to check them out for yourselves. Uh, they don't work great post update, but I'm working on alternatives. We haven't got very far yet. I'm, I'm not. Much, I'm not very creative beyond aim for the big guy. At corners and if that doesn't work anymore I don't really have a plan B um, but we'd like a goal now please I mean to be fair a draw would be a, a good starting point as long as it's not a nil-nil draw and now it can't be a nil-nil draw because we've conceded a goal we just I would I would love a goal today just show some signs of life in the attack otherwise this is going to be a long hard half a season um, if we just have not got any ability to score football goals because that is quite a valuable thing to have at this level. Huddersfield 1, Preston nil. currently. Come on, boys. Have we got a goal in us from anyone? Anywhere? A goal? Anyone got a goal? I've encouraged them, but seemingly no goal. Should we go attacking in the second half? They're going to get nosebleeds. They're, they're not used to attacking. I've had to explain to a few of them, especially the forwards, what I mean when I say I want them to attack. I would like them to try and score a goal, which, again, just to explain what that means for the Preston players, um, take that round thing off of the other team, put it in the net the way other teams keep doing to us. That's the plan for the second half. We're going to get a goal, or at least we're going to let in try and get one. Um, I'm probably going to bring Ida on shortly as well, because I do feel like he can be the one who gets all the goals. He's got everything that he would need to have to be a regular goal scorer. I mean, I'm not going to bring him on right now, but let me know down in the comments section why this guy doesn't score goals. Because I look at him, if we play him as, we'll probably play him as an advanced forward because it's football manager and that's all I ever do. Tell me what his weakness is and as, advan as an advanced forward. He's six foot three. He's very quick. He's a good finisher. Decent... This is a 25 goal a season striker, if ever I saw one. I know I'm not an attributes guy, and this might be where I'm going wrong. But with my limited knowledge of football manager attributes, I look at him and think, he'll score goals at this level. If given the chance, he'd score goals in the Premier League. We just need to give him the opportunity. We're 2-0 down, though. We're now demanding more. This isn't, uh, this isn't the start I had in mind to my Preston career. Brady with the free kick. Um, but it doesn't get anywhere near 
one of our players. And it was kind of the theme of the end of my run at Peterborough Sports, struggling to do a football ever. Brady's got himself sent off. Well, that might be the last you ever see of Brady because I was already pretty much done with him because he's old. And now he's proven that he's not capable of playing this position without getting himself sent off like a numbskull. So he is done. Um, do we have anyone else who can play left back? Andrew Hughes, formerly of Peterborough United, kind of a centre back. Certainly not a wing back. Really not who I want occupying that position. We don't really have much of another option. Those two backup fullbacks that both got highlighted as part of that substitution, I've put them both on the transfer list. Neither of them are going to be capable of playing as a fullback in this system that we want to be playing. Right, we're we're going to have to make an attacking change here. Show is going to come off. And we're going to drop Woodburn back. We are going to bring on Ida to play up front. This guy is actually our top scorer this season, so maybe he should be coming on as well. Emil Reese, top scorer with two goals. It is it's pathetic. There's no there's no hiding from the fact that he's genuinely pathetic. The the goal scoring prowess in this football team or lack thereof. Right, can Maguire play there? He can. So if we drop Maguire back, because Woodburn's coming off as well. Woodburn. Woodburn is getting tired. So is Maguire, to be honest, actually. We might just leave it at this for now. Give Ida a couple of minutes. And then Reese can come on in the next wave of substitutions as we try. And it's very difficult to work out who might be good and what's, what, what might work for us when we're down to 10 men. It's the worst possible time to pick up a red card in our first match when I'm still getting to know the players. At least I've got an excuse for losing. The idiot went and got himself sent off. Right, Ida. See, this is this is what I mean. How is he not a top striker? That was great. Hold up play and everything. I, my, the bar is low at the moment. I will, I will level with you. The bar is very low. And he's a tall boy, so does meet the criteria. Right, 15 minutes to go. What have we got on this bench? Wide players more than anything. You could probably play fullback young man you should be playing fullback why did I not bring you on when I, I've, I've changed both my fullbacks today right we're going to put Hughes at centre back so that we can get this guy on to play left wing back Can he? is he left footed he's right footed we'll see about that um, and we are going to take off Woodburn now and bring on Reese. he can go back there he can go up top and Ida can drop back to be a target man. In fact, forget target man. Complete forward. He's too quick to just be a target man. Be a complete forward. Right. Have we got a goal in us? Just scoring a goal would make me feel so much more comfortable about how this job is going to be for us. I don't think we're going to get one today, are we? And it's headed clear to Reese. There you go. Look, he picks the ball up nicely. Thomas showing that he's a fullback. And there is Adam Ida, the man who I've promised you is going to score goals this season. He's quick, but why has he stopped? I mean, he's done, again, it's half decent hold-up play. I think he's won a, I thought he'd won a penalty. I think he thought he'd won a penalty. Everyone kind of stopped. Um, my inspirational substitution at left back hasn't really worked out. Um, because Thomas got absolutely ruined there. But there is Whiteman and Ida again dropping it. I tell you what, he's had a good game since coming on. Uh, Booth playing it into the path of Adam Ida. That time, surely he's got a penalty. We're going to score a goal. This is huge progress for Preston North End. It's Adam Ida from the penalty spot. Can he score a goal to get into double figures for his career? Oh, he can. See, goal a game striker since I've been here. Third goal of the season for the big guy up top. I wonder if we've got an equaliser in us. That would really set us up nicely. If we can go and grab an equaliser now. It's very unlikely, but we will demand more. Come on, boys. We've actually played quite well. Hughes with the free kick. Why is he shooting? We've got all these attackers. Just get it in the penalty area. We've been the better team on XG. We will have a little look at the XG table, actually. Maybe this team has just been wronged all season. And we just need to teach the strikers to score goals. Uh, but that was... Yeah. A disappointing, disappointing start to life here at Preston. There is going to be much work to do. We're back to the bottom of the league. We're still eight points from safety, so that's not got any worse. That's a good thing. XG table isn't much better. Well, at least Brady's banned, so we don't have to use an old man in the next match. This is going to be a tough one, boys and girls. We're not going to play many matches between now 
and the next episode. We'll probably only get into January and start shipping some players out. So I'll play the next three games off camera. We'll be back in early January and we'll be back with a plan, hopefully. <laughs> really hope we'll have a plan by then if you've enjoyed that please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching